numbers out today show that, as expected, millions more people have filed for unemployment in the last week. 4.4 million Americans workers sought jobless aid. Now that means since the coronavirus hit, more than 26 million people have lost their jobs. Action 9 investigator Jason Stujinki has been talking to many who have lost their jobs during this pandemic. And Jason, many of them have had trouble with North Carolina's unemployment website, which is so overwhelmed right now. Yeah, Damani, overwhelmed is obviously the key word. Just to put this all in perspective for you, almost one out of every six people, workers, folks who were working back in the beginning of March, has since lost his or her job. So really a staggering figure right there. And as you said, many are getting unemployment, but many are not. A lot of people tell me they're still having trouble with the unemployment website and getting a real person on the phone. In many cases, this has been going on for weeks now, and you can just imagine the frustration I'm hearing from people. Now, North Carolina's Department of Commerce runs the unemployment program. It says it's taken a lot of steps to combat the problems, including hiring more workers, borrowing workers from other parts of its agency, outsourcing to a private call center to relieve some of that phone burden, and beefing up its computers and phones. But you also alluded to this earlier. It looks like the problem may still be getting worse. A lot of economists predict that we could be up to about 20% unemployment by the end of this month, and that's just going to tax the system mm. even more, Damani. A difficult time for a lot of people across the country. Jason, thank you. Well, a big development that likely will impact a lot of you. Novant Health plans to start scheduling non-essential surgeries soon that have been canceled for weeks because of the pandemic. Let's turn now to reporter Gina Esposito, who is at Novant Health. And Gina, it's encouraging that the hospital is in the position to actually do this. Yes, certain surgeries and procedures here at Novant Health have been on hold since March 18th. So as you can imagine, a lot of people have been in limbo, not knowing when they could reschedule their appointments. But here's what I can tell you. Novant Health says that non-emergent and non-sensitive um, procedures and surgeries will resume on Monday, March, May 4th. This also applies to clinics. Appointments will resume for pediatric well checks, chronic diseases, and acute issue visits. Starting today, you may receive a call from Novon Health to schedule your appointment. Appointments are being prioritized based on patients who had delayed and postponed appointments and procedures. Novon Health CEO and President Carl Motto released a statement saying in part, the number of patients receiving care for COVID-19 within our facilities has stabilized and our team stands ready to care for the community. Novon Health says that patients and team members will receive additional screenings. They recommend that patients going to their appointment wear a face mask or some sort of face covering. Back to you. Well, some good news for folks looking to get those elective surgeries done. Thanks a lot, Gina. Well, in the last hour, North Carolina reported about 400 new cases of COVID-19. 11 more people have died and 52 more people are hospitalized. Mecklenburg County now has more than 1300 cases. You got to keep in mind here. The state has done more than 96,000 tests and only 8% have come back positive. And in South Carolina, 43,000 tests have been completed with more than 4,600 positive results. Well, today, Governor Roy Cooper is expected to unveil his plan to begin easing the stay at home order in North Carolina. Now, right now, it's set to expire next Wednesday. State officials have been meeting with three groups about how they could reopen. One focuses on mass gatherings like concerts, games and religious ceremonies. Another looks at businesses. The State Chamber of Commerce and the Retail Merchants Association are involved in discussing how stores could safely reopen. The other is focused on restaurants and their ability to operate while implementing social distancing between employees and customers and how they would screen employees for COVID-19 symptoms. The Mecklenburg County manager wants the stay at home order extended for two more weeks to ramp up testing and contact tracing. We'll carry the governor's conference live at 3 p.m. on Channel 9 and also right on our streaming app, TV News app. Well, today, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster will hold the first meeting of his new group of school and business leaders to talk about revitalizing the economy. McMaster announced yesterday schools will stay closed for the rest of this school year. Since March 16th, districts have worked to provide classwork to students online or put together packets for pickup. Breakfasts and lunch have been prepared every day for students. 
Fort Mill school officials say despite classes being online, they are working hard to finish the school year strong. We've got a lot of work to do to finish out the rest of the year and keep everybody focused. But so far, I think everybody's starting to hit a very good stride with it and getting into a routine of how to deal with it at home. The local districts tell us they're preparing to open in the fall as normal if they can. Now, there's been no decision yet on fall sports or how busing could work. And next school year could also be impacted. One leading U.S. model is predicting a surge in cases in August. Now take a look here. These are projections from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, which is a model the White House has relied on. It increased the projected U.S. death toll by August to 66,000. That's up 10 percent. And the CDC warns it doesn't look much better after that. Now in the last hour, Charlotte Douglas officials met to discuss changes they're making when it comes to the virus. The airport originally had a budget of $98 million for the 2021 fiscal year, but they've revised that to now $79 million. Well, the airport is also in a hiring freeze as few people fly. The airport is also pausing some construction projects, including the Concourse A expansion phase two. The lobby expansion is still ongoing. Well, with air travel down, the Federal Aviation Administration is cutting back on hours at more than 100 air traffic control towers across the country. Fewer air traffic controllers are needed to watch the skies over smaller airports. The agency did not specify which towers would see reductions, but said the impacted airports are normally closed at night. It says the changes will reduce hours at non-peak times and there will be no effects on the airports. With it's a startling statistic here, Rowan County now has 17 deaths and 16 of them have been residents in long term care facilities. County officials aren't naming which nursing homes have seen COVID-19 related deaths, but they say 102 residents of the Citadel nursing home have tested positive. We've also learned about at least 14 residents at the veterans home in Salisbury have tested positive along with three staff members. Kendra Johnson told us her father has not tested positive, but she wonders if it's just a matter of time. How can any body, resident, staff alike in these facilities um, stay safe or be safe? And then when, when, oh when will they get to see their families again? Well, Johnson says that her father and others in the veterans home have been retested and she's hoping to have the results back by the end of the week. Well, one local family is now suing one of those Salisbury nursing homes. Attorneys claim the owners of the Citadel didn't do enough to prepare for the virus. The family of 96 year old Marjorie Fuller Garvin says she contracted the virus because the owners were negligent, reckless and failed to prepare. If you stand on the tracks long enough, you will get hit by the freight train. But this was a train that insiders knew was coming. An attorney for the owners of the Citadel sent a statement saying in part the Citadel Salisbury has an emergency preparedness plan as required by its licensure and it also has implemented a COVID-19 pandemic plan. Both plans were reviewed and implemented well before there were any signs of the virus at the Citadel Salisbury. Well, we found local churches are really stepping up to help people adjust to the changes brought on by this pandemic. I know you've never been this way before. Life Center International and Charlotte shared this video on social media here. Other churches have produced similar videos designed to help ease fears. The pastor wrote the script for this one and got members to participate. I realized that we have an opportunity to bring peace and comfort to individuals just through the speaking of our words. The pastor said he said the idea for a PSA style message comes from some of the messages messages shared by health officials. 